To get started shaping the rudder, the first thing I needed to do was to see how the tiller was going to fit in there. So early on, when I first started uh, laying out the boat, here on sheet seven is all of the full-size patterns. And you can see I made this pattern of the tiller, which is exactly how it fits there. Now the problem was when I put this tiller on the boat, it no way fit the way that it should. It's way, way up too high. Uh, in fact, it looks like it's nearly two feet high. So with a considerable amount of head scratching, I figured out that the pattern for the tiller was not correct, and also a couple of other things that are in the plans that I did not know about. So over here on the construction plans, which are sheet five, you can see a uh, drawing of the tiller. And just by looking at it, I can tell that it arcs much more than the original pattern. So what I did was I drew a straight line from the two uh, points of the tiller, and then I marked it off every six inches. Now the plans here are one and a half inches equals one foot. So then I took my one and a half to uh, one foot scale here, and I measured up each one of these. And so you can see like this one here is two inches. So I marked all of those. And then what I did was I got a piece of quarter inch plywood and I replotted all of those lines onto the plywood and laid out the tiller. You can see in this example where the two are sitting next to each other that the new layout is, has a much more of a camber or, or an arch to it than the original one did. So the next thing that I found was that the plans for the tiller hole show that it is cut in there straight at 90 degrees, which is how I did that. But when I look at the plans here, I can see that that tiller hole is actually on a little bit of an angle. So I took a small bonsai saw and I started trimming that up to put a little angle on there. So at first I used a uh, chisel to get the majority of the material off and then used a hand rasp to clean it up. So then I positioned the new tiller pattern on there and you can see it fits much, much better and looks more like the way it should. Now on the plans, from the top of the aft deck to the top of the tiller, we can scale that off and see that it is about 11 inches. And you can see that that is uh, pretty close to what I have there. So now that I've got the tiller all positioned against the rudder, I can mark that and then I can get started shaping the rudder. Well, the plans show that the bottom of the tiller handle to the top of the rudder is five inches. So I've got the tiller laid out here with the rudder. Uh, and you can see this is where I, I uh, cut it off at. And I've taken, this is, I used as a pattern and you can see that the height of this is five inches. So this pattern here, I will then uh, mark with this spot like that. So now that I know this here, I'm going to make my, um, I'm going to make this piece out of walnut because I'm going to make all of my uh, rudder cheeks out of walnut. So I want that uh, piece in there so that when you're looking at it from the end, you'll see the walnut. So in addition to that, I'm going to cut off this little bevel here and add a piece of walnut there. And then I'm going to come back here and cut back uh, a little bit also, maybe about three quarters of an inch and add a piece of walnut in there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these and put some walnut on there and then get shaping the rest of it. So 
So on the plans, it shows a cross section of the rudder that has a, a taper down to the aft end of it. So that's what I'm going to do next. In the last episode, several of you noticed that I glued the two pieces of marine plywood together with Type Bond 3. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about why I did that and the difference between Type Bond 3 and epoxy. So first of all, both are waterproof glues, and secondly, they're both stronger than wood itself. So which one is stronger is really irrelevant. So why I used Type Bond 3 on that is that when you're using, when you want to clamp something together and you want a really clean joint, you can do that with Type Bond 3. With epoxy, you cannot clamp it tight. You have to let a little bit of layer of epoxy in there in order for it to glue properly. Now some of the other benefits at this particular, uh, for this application was that uh, for, well, first of all, Type Bond 3 is much less expensive than epoxy. Uh, secondly, it's a water cleanup and it's non-toxic. Now, one of the good things about uh, epoxy is that it's a good gap filler. So if you're gluing two things together and they're irregular and you need to fill in that gap, it's a really good glue for that. Anecdotally, I can tell you that uh, several years ago I spilled some Type Bond 3 on the cuff of a pair of jeans. Now, I've had those jeans for at least several years now, and they've gone through, I don't know, 30, 40 washings, and that Type Bond 3 is still attached to those jeans, and as much as I've picked at it, I can't even pull it off. So I think it's a good testament that uh, Type Bond 3 is a very waterproof glue. Now, one of the other benefits to epoxy is that you can coat things with it, and you would not coat things with Type Bond 3. As you'll see a little bit later, uh, I'm going to use epoxy to coat the outside of the rudder. So I hope that clears that up on why I used Type Bond 3. So in summary, if you want a really nice tight joint that it doesn't show, you want to use Type Bond 3. If you have some gaps you need to fill, then epoxy is a good choice.
Well, now that I've got the rudder all fared out, the next thing I need to do is to make the rudder cheeks and the spacer for that. So earlier, I had taken a piece of walnut stock and ran it through the surface planer and got it milled down to the exactly the same thickness as the rudder. I then uh, used that little template that I had to uh, cut the proper angle on the bottom of that. So I got that cut off and then I took and cut out that little template and laid it out on that piece of wood and cut it out on the bandsaw. So now that I've got uh, all of the, this little piece made, the next thing I need to do is to make a template for the rudder cheeks. Now the plans call for the rudder cheeks to be 7 16 of an inch thick and I need two of them. So the first thing I need to do, of course, is to make that template. So the way I'm going to do that is with a piece of uh, poster board here and I'm going to slide this under here and line it up with the rudder. Put the tiller in and put my little spacer on here and I'm going to mark that out. Now I've already marked where the rudder cheek needs to be and I had mentioned earlier that the that that line needs to be parallel to the water line. Now the transom on the boat is exactly 45 degrees off of the water line. So this was very easy to get by using my, um, my small square here and getting that on there. So now I'm going to mark where the, that line comes down here. And then connect the dots. Okay, so I'll get this cut out and that'll be the pattern for my rudder treats. So we'll see how our pieces fit together here. I'll go just like that. So the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get the, these rudder cheeks made first before I sealed everything is I also want to seal the inside of these surfaces. So that's why I wanted to make them now. So speaking of sealing, the next thing I'm going to do is to seal the uh, rudder with a couple of coats of epoxy. Now the epoxy has set overnight and has set up really well. Now I put two good coats of epoxy on here. Now when you're recoating with epoxy, if after the first layer it hasn't completely cured, you can easily recoat it right away because uh, that way it then chemically bonds to itself. Once it's all set up, 
you then need to rough it up so that you can mechanically bond it to, to another uh, coat of epoxy if that's what you're going for. Uh, I think I've got two really good coats on here, so what I'm going to do is to go over and rough this up with some 120 grit sandpaper and then get some primer on it. So once I got finished sanding, I vacuumed off all of the dust really well, and then I wiped it down with some acetone. Now the primer I'm going to use is uh, Rust-Oleum's Rusty Metal Primer. And this is the best primer for underwater applications that you can commercially buy. I'm going to use it on the whole thing even though the water line is, you know, somewhere in here because uh, certainly if it works below the water line, it's going to work above the water line as well. Let me get a brush. One of these little foam, call them hot dog rollers. They work pretty good. You can see up here where I taped off the where the rudder cheeks will go so that I don't paint up on there because I want to, there's no need to, and I also want to keep that little piece of walnut showing. All right, well, we'll let that dry and then we'll flip it over for the other side. So while that's drying, I think what I'll do is get the uh, gudgeons mortised into the boat. First thing I want to do is uh, mark out the outside of the piece. I put this tape on here because it'd be really hard to see the marker on the uh, varnished walnut. I didn't have to do that on the lower one because it was white, so the tensile worked fine. So I put some little finish marks here so I know that that's where it belongs. So to get started, in order to countersink it, I took the um, gudgeon and I put it on a piece of plywood here and marked it out and then I took a one and an eighth inch Forstner bit and drilled a couple of holes in there like that and then drilled a couple of other little holes that will be buried underneath it in order to mount it. So I'm going to mount this so that the that will guide that Forstner bit.
I've got two coats of primer on the rudder now and it's sat overnight so it's good and dry. So now it's time to install the pintles. Now the pintles, according to the plans, get installed with a number 18 bronze screw. So I had a few comments from the last video about the strength of this method of attaching the pintle to the rudder. Uh, several people seem to think that there needed to be a bronze strap on each side here. So I decided I'd go to the expert, and the foremost expert on havens is Eric Dow. He's a boat builder in Brooklyn, Maine, and his boat shop is directly across the street from the Brooklyn boat yard, which is where Joel White had designed the haven. So I asked Eric first how many havens had he built in his 40 plus year career as a boat builder. And he said he's built 52 Haven 12 and a halfs. And in addition to that, he's repaired and restored nearly 100 Haven 12 and a half and Herreshoff 12 and a halfs combined. The Herreshoff 12 and a half uses the same method of attaching the pintle to the rudder. So I asked him if he had ever run into a problem with this method of attaching it. And he said in all of his years, He's only had one repair that needed to be done on a pintle on a haven rudder. And why that was, was because it was improperly moored. And what had happened was that when you moor the boat, you need to tie off the rudder, to tie off the tiller so that the rudder can't move around uh, in, the, in the current or in the wind or whatever. So it had been improperly moored for probably 10, 15 years. And what had happened was that the bronze screw wore a hole in the bottom pintle. So that pintle was loose. So I asked him what he needed to do to fix that and he said he just simply put a new pintle on it. That the wood itself was still perfectly okay for the, to receive that screw. So with that knowledge, I'm pretty confident that this is the proper way to attach these pintles to the rudder. Now, I already have drilled the proper size holes in here to receive this uh, number 18 bronze screw. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a little bedding compound in there. So I'm going to tape this off so that I don't get it all over the rudder. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So I've got a little sealant here. Now it's um, a tan color because unbeknownst to me, it comes in white and tan. And I, when I ordered it a while back, I ended up with tan instead of white, which makes absolutely no difference. I've already pre-waxed these screws so that they'll go in a little easier. The other thing that it shows here is that the head of the screw needs to be trimmed off once it's inset. Next up is to fit those rotor cheeks.
Well, up here is I have a little bit of a problem. The, um, these two cheeks, when I put them together, you can see they're warped quite a bit. Um, I believe what's happened is that the, since I sealed the inside of them, that the outside has dried out and it's, uh, they actually, I made these only maybe two days ago, so it's uh, pretty amazing how much that's moved. So I think the only solution is to make some new uh, rudder cheeks. Uh, it's not a big loss, not that much material. Um, but we're running out of time this week for me to finish those up. So next episode, we'll get the rudder all finished, and hopefully I'll have some finished paint on it. And we'll also start working on the tiller. So as always, thanks for watching The Art of Boat Building. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful. <laughs>